London. It's a city full of art, but nowhere has quite the prestige or raises quite so much debate as the Royal Academy of Arts. I think it's an amazing platform and uh, an amazing space in central London to be exhibiting art. Around for 250 years, now transformed. For the first time, there'll be elements of the Royal Academy that people have never seen. This is really important. Hoping to reach a new generation of members, artists and visitors. The Academy received a $16 million grant from the UK's Heritage Lottery Fund, but the whole project cost nearly five times that amount. But now the day is finally here. This is it, the grand unveiling of the new RA. These are some of the earliest pictures of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. Dating from the 1930s, this shows the hanging committee at work, preparing for the summer exhibition. Here, politicians and artists arrive for the season's private view. The Royal Academy has always been a place of prestige, bringing out the great and good when it comes to British art. And that's exactly what it was designed for. It was founded by King George III in 1768. He thought it would be a good way to promote the arts in Britain. But despite backing from the Crown, at heart it's an independent, privately funded institution led by artists and architects. Fast forward from its creation to today, and despite some avant-garde solo shows, Critics have accused the Academy of being stuffy and out of touch. Its imposing venue hasn't always helped with first impressions. The Royal Academy of Arts may have existed for 250 years, but it didn't move to Burlington House, its third venue, until it had been around for a century. And while it's unlikely to move location again, the changes happening this year could be its most radical transformation yet. Christopher Le Brun, president of the RA since 2011, thinks it's going from strength to strength. Oh, it's extraordinary. It's, it's, it's changed my life. Can I say that? Um, I think because when I joined in 1996, I had to think to myself, is this, is this somewhere I'd like to be part of? Because artists always need to think about their reputation, what they're associating themselves with. But I had the idea that the Royal Academy was going to get better. And I wanted to be part of that. And when I spoke earlier today about possibly this is a golden age for the Royal Academy, I think we've made it happen. The RA is made up of Royal Academicians. There can be 80 at any one time. They're artists, sculptors and architects and they're responsible for governing the Academy and charting its direction. For this redevelopment, there needed to be agreement from all of the academicians, as well as the permanent staff. A $75 million renovation. It's a huge sum of money, so what's actually been done? It's partly a physical change. So we bought the building we're standing in, Burlington Gardens, in 2001, and we've been working on plans for its renovation ever since. It's a huge project. There's a big public lecture theatre with 257 seats. There's a new collections gallery, which is what we're standing in. There are new exhibition galleries. There's new learning space. There's a bridge across the back courtyard into the original building. So it is a very significant increase in space. The new academy unites Burlington House with Burlington Gardens, which the RA acquired in 2001. This creates 70% more public space and provides the opportunity for a whole heap of new features, including this suite of galleries for temporary exhibitions. 
The artist chosen to inaugurate this space is Tacita Dean, one of Britain's foremost visual artists the first whose work simultaneously appeared in the National Portrait Gallery, the National Gallery and the Royal Academy. The central theme of this exhibition is landscape and it's a genre that has an interesting history with the Royal Academy of Arts. Um, traditionally, in the hierarchy of uh, painterly genres that was put forward by Reynolds, landscape was relatively low down, but as it turned out, champions of the, of the genre like Constable Gainsborough and Turner uh, really rose landscape to a new level um, at the beginnings of the Royal Academy. So it's appropriate to have Tacita's landscape work presented here um, and to explore that genre through the contemporary prism of her work. Um, and landscape as a theme for Tacita also brings um, together many of the, the themes and concerns that, that really uh, run like a thread throughout her work. Tacita Dean has reimagined the idea of scape, including slate cloud drawings and oversized photographs. For 250 years, the Academy's been about art as a force for good. But that concept hasn't always been easy to keep running, especially financially. And that's where the Friends of the Royal Academy, numbering currently 100,000, really come into their own. core to how we operate is the fact we have a friends program. We have 100,000, roughly 100,000 friends, and they pay now £125 a year. So we get 11 or 12 million. That's the heart of our funding. And that funding has now made a radical change to one area in particular, the Academy's school. Rebecca Salter is the keeper of the Academy. She oversees the school, which has the oldest art program in Britain. I think there are several things that are very precious about the RA Schools programme. It was originally set up by the academicians right at the beginning, 250 years ago, to pass the knowledge of one generation onto the next generation and for free. So there were no fees then and there are no fees now. And that's something which is very special. And that means we can take students purely on merit and talent, not that they got enough money to come here. Only 17 artists a year are admitted to the school. So it is a really special program. It's kind of the only um, three-year postgraduate course. Um, so it really gives you a lot of time to kind of focus on your work and develop it and kind of be part um, of a really small and supportive community in which to do so. As part of the redevelopment, students have been given a new exhibition space, Western Studio. The link between Burlington House and Burlington Gardens now means their studios are also much more accessible. We take a sneak peek at the work of Josh Pye, who's coming to the end of his third year. It's uh, really nice to come in today uh, and it's all open. That was, that was like a big surprise for me. I think it looks really good. I'm really impressed. Um, the whole time I've been here, so the three years I've been here, the work has been going on, so it has been quite distract distracting, I suppose, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's for a good cause, and um, I've been able to get on with the work, and it's been really, yeah, it's been really good. Um, yeah, I've loved, I've loved it. Um, it's such a, uh, it's a really, um, it's quite a high-pressure situation, for sure. You've got lots of, it's quite competitive, um, and the sort of conversations that occur um, are not necessarily what you would perhaps expect, um, but definitely challenge your perceptions of what art is. Josh is part of the next generation of the Royal Academy, soon to be let loose on the UK's art scene. What does the Academy really mean in a wider context for artists who aren't already academicians? Is it really worth the hype? My studio where I spend half a week. To find out, I've come to Brixton to meet one of the UK's most exciting young artists, Guy Allen. Once a year they have the summer exhibition, which is the most amazing opportunity for anyone to um, submit a piece of artwork or two and have the chance to exhibit it at probably one of the most prestigious uh, galleries in London, the UK. And uh, 
yeah, having that opportunity is amazing. Guy's work has appeared more than once in the world's largest open submission show, the Royal Academy's Summer Exhibition. I felt very honoured to be exhibiting there amongst some of my huge inspirations in the art world. And it, it, uh, and then it's the whole, not just exhibiting, it's the whole process. The, there's a huge traditional element of it. And you go to Varnishing Day, which is a traditional, within 200 years ago, it was the day when all of the masters, they, all of the uh, big master paintings, painters would come there and literally varnish their paintings before it was, um, before they, the doors were open to the crowds. But they still have that varnishing day and it's, you walk down the main road outside and you go and have a church service. And it's just, it's lovely. And the tradition is stuck, but the art has developed a huge amount. 20,000 artists applied to show their work at this year's summer exhibition. Guy's made the shortlist and we'll soon find out if this piece of work will be chosen for display. One of the central ideas of art, it's not talked about very much now, is that it will outlive you. It's death defying. We don't talk about this aspect, but actually one of the reasons our supporters believe in us is that they want the academy to carry on, they want continuity, they want the continuity of content for teaching to carry on and on and on. So I think we're definitely going to be here 250 years in 250 years. The Royal Academy is not perfect. It's been criticised by some as too stuffy. It's been dismissed by others as too risque. But this $75 million expansion, the most money the Academy's ever spent on an upgrade, is a step towards a more inclusive future. It clearly lays out the Academy's intention to be seen as much more than just a museum venue, providing a welcoming space that will still be at the forefront of the art scene for years to come.